Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I am going to take you on a fish fry. Yeah, it's Friday. Well, that's when I'm making the video. Will I release it on a Friday? I guess I should release it on a Friday. I'm gonna release this on a Friday. Uh, it's Friday, so we're gonna make a fish fry. I was in Epcot recently. I know, I know that, that that fish and chips did not originate in Epcot, but the UK in Epcot, I think it's called like the Yorkshire Fish and Chips Food Cart, is like my favorite thing. It's also like the best value. It's like $12.99 for like a giant piece of fish. Sometimes it's one piece or two pieces and then the hand cut chips, which are french fries. Um, and I'm like, I'm gonna make this. That's my next recipe, I'm gonna make this at home. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. All you need is a simple white fish. You can go to the market, it's cheap. You can either get a, get a fresh one or a frozen one. I use the frozen ones and thaw them out. You'll see what I'm gonna do. And then you could even make your own hand cut french fries or chips in this situation, which is gonna be a separate video, which I'll link to. Um, or you can just get, you know, pre-bagged. I like the Nathan's ones, you know, and fry those up alongside the fish. Either way you do it, it's remarkably easy, this recipe. Very little work, very little effort, very little time, and we're gonna actually be, you know, getting out the deep fryer today, or you can use a Dutch oven on your on your stove, or like a big saute pan with high walls around it, that's fine. So get ready, my friends, and get happy, because it's Friday, and we're gonna have some amazing fish and chips. Let's do it. So the first thing with the fish and chips is going to be, well, the fish. And you can really use any kind of white fish you want, but for me, I go with cod. And I typically find the best value is a frozen filet that's already deboned and de-skinned or boneless skinless to make it much more easy to understand. Um, and I usually get them frozen from the market, right? But you can absolutely use fresh ones, just make sure they're, you know, there's no bone. And the reason I like this is because, look at this, they come individually wrapped, just like so. So what we want to do is just make sure they thaw out completely. And actually to speed up a thawing process of frozen fish or shrimp, just put it in a colander under the sink in uh, some cold water. Run it through cold water, not hot water. And after a few minutes, it'll really thaw out. A little tip for you. Okay, so these have thawed. I'm using four fillets here, so whatever you want to do. But here I go, that's as simple as that. That's the prep in terms of the fish here, all right? Just like that. Now let's work on our batter. Okay, now we're gonna focus on creating our beer batter, which is so simple, and it's what makes these fish and chips so outrageously good. All right, so what I wanna do is take one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and to that I wanna add one teaspoon of baking powder. Not baking soda, baking powder. Next, let's season this batter up. I wanna add in one tablespoon of seasoned salt, and for that I use Lowry's, that brand, it's like, it's a great price. It's like in a red container. One and a half teaspoons each of garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. You can use smoked or regular. I use smoked for this. And one teaspoon of black pepper. And then let's just whisk all that together. So the seasonings and the baking powder combine nicely with our all-purpose flour. And this would not be a beer battered fish and chips, or beer battered anything, without some beer. I'm going to add 12 ounces, or a cup and a half, it's the same thing, of like a lager or like an amber ale. I'm using for this, um, Budweiser. Just old, good old fashioned Budweiser. And it's best if the beer is already cold, and I'm going to whisk. And you see, as I stir everything up, it's gonna basically have the same consistency as a pancake batter. It's gonna look like a pancake batter. This is exactly how it should be. Not super thin, but not super thick, just right. Okay, now we're ready to batter and fry. Okay, now I would prepare this when your cod fillets or haddock or hake, whatever you're using, any type of white fish, mahi-mahi will even work. Make sure they're nice and thawed, and then you wanna whisk this together right before you're about to fry. Okay, so for me to cook my fish and chips, what I'm gonna be doing is using a deep fryer for this, because I feel like it just makes the most sense, because I have a deep fryer, and they're quite affordable, and they're perfect for french fries, which would be the chips in this situation. Anything you get from Costco, basically, in the frozen section that requires like a fry, like mozzarella sticks or the egg rolls, amazing in this. It's worth it, in my opinion. Super affordable. Um, you just fill it up about halfway with either a vegetable, canola, or you can even use peanut oil. That's fine. You don't want to use extra virgin olive oil. Or you can do this on your stove in a Dutch oven or like a saute pan, something with a pan with high walls in it and fill it up about halfway with the same kind of oil. Bring it to about 375 degrees. Okay, so we're preheated here and I have my batter. So what I want to do is I want to take each piece of fish and just put it in my batter, fully coat the whole thing, just like so. See this? 
and then I just want to lay it inside, directly in the oil. Do it with each one. Get each one in there. Of course, be very careful when you're dropping this into the oil. And you're going to get about four pieces at a time in there. All right, we're going to let this fry for about six minutes. And then midway through, you can flip each piece of fish with some tongs. Make sure it gets golden brown on both sides. Okay, and after about six minutes of cooking our fish, it's going to be done. It should be. So let's remove it from the deep fryer onto a plate that has a paper towel on it because it'll help absorb any of that oil. You can also use a baking rack for this. Oh boy, look at this. Look at how beautiful this is looking. Oh yes. That is some serious fish and chip situation going on right there, my friends. Look at how beautiful that is. All right, let's try this out. And there it is, some gorgeous, look at how beautiful golden beer battered fish, or fish and chips, if you want to know what I'm, you know, that, come on, let's get real. That's how you really do it, right? Fish and chips. And I'm going to show you how you can make these chips, or just french fries, in a separate video, which I'll link, and I'm already going to eat one. And then, of course, if you want some lemon to go with it, some people do, and some tartar sauce, by all means, feel free, and we have a true fish and chip situation going on here. So. Some people also like malt vinegar, it's up to you. But right now... It's focusing on this fish, so we're gonna try some of this out right now. Okay, my friends, and here it is, fish and chips. Well, I'm excited, so I'm gonna try a bite out of this and see how it is. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. You hear that crunch? Mm. That is seriously delicious. Tastes like something you'd get in a restaurant. I like some tartar sauce with mine, so we're gonna put some of that in there. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. And it couldn't be easier. Not the healthiest thing in the world, but delicious nonetheless. If you enjoy these recipes, check out pressurelovecooking.com because I have a ton of recipes there. I'm known as like the guy who does all the instant pot stuff. That's kind of what I'm known for. But as you can see, I do other things, not just the Instant Pot. And here we are making some delicious fish and chips, which you can do in your deep fryer or in your frying pan or Dutch oven. Well, a, a saute pan, something with a high walled pan situation so it doesn't splatter everywhere. Oh, and by the way, I, I did write four cookbooks for the Instant Pot, in case anybody's interested. If you're Instant Pot out there, you're not going to find any better books. They're the easiest. They all have step-by-step -step color photos and a final shot for every recipe. So, and all four books. Trust me, you want those books. Even if you don't have an Instant Pot, now you should get one. Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking. Check me out there. Make sure you like the page or favorite it or whatever it is you have to do now to make sure that you see me in your feed. It always changes every day. At Pressure Love Cooking on YouTube, uh, Instagram, all the other stuff, really. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time you want to make a meal that's easy and restaurant quality with no blips, well, just come on down and make some of Jeffrey's fish and chips. Enjoy. Enjoy.